Okay, so uh, let's get started. So I'm going to present you uh, leveraging Docker for Hadoop build automation and big data stack provisioning. Uh, so first of all, three things I would like to uh, tell you first. So if you are looking for putting Hadoop on top of Docker in production, we are not doing that in this talk. So <laughs> if you are looking for that, you probably have time to find another session right now. Okay, so the first thing is that. Uh, second one is, uh, this is a more community-driven talk. So for example, community words, uh, community stats, uh, releases, uh, we'll be, talking in, we'll be um, uh, talking in this talk. And the third one, of course, I'm not a native speaker, so. <laughs> so okay, let's get started. Uh, who am I? So uh, I'm, a, I'm tech lead at APAC Data Team, uh, belongs to Yahoo Taiwan. So uh, if you are not aware, we are officially off right now. And we are building dark data products for e-commerce business uh, back in Taiwan. So those are the brands we, we were uh, working on. Uh, I'm also a long time uh, uh, Apache contributor, so right now I'm become the PMC chair of Apache Big Top. So this is the outline I'm going to uh, show you. Uh, so first we will uh, quickly talk about uh, what is Apache Big Top, and then uh, several uh, improvements we use Docker, for example, uh, packaging, uh, provisioner, and sandbox. We, I will talk about those later. And finally, I would like to bring up some releases stuff. So quick intro to Apache Big Top. Uh, as you may know, there are many Linux distribution around the world, CentOS, uh, Fedora, Ubuntu, SUSE, Debian. And there are also a lot of, a lot of Hadoop distrib distribution around as well. So, uh, but there are some problems uh, for those ex existing uh, Hadoop distribution. For example, if I would like to have another great Hadoop ecosystem components uh, be available in our Hadoop stack, how, how do we do that? And furthermore, how do I add patches to our existing Hadoop stack? Those are problems you, we cannot achieve with those uh, uh, vendor because uh, you cannot get the source code and from upstream pro projects and put it, uh, transform them into a, a, a RPM or Debian package for your operators to put them into a production cluster. So here comes Apache Big Top. Uh, so Apache Big Top is a project uh, which uh, mainly focus on building Hadoop distributions for system admins. So we take uh, source code from upstream projects and offer you a build framework for you to produce RPM and Debian packages. Uh, so here are some supported components from Apache Big Top. We support most of the major components around Hadoop ecosystem, you name it, Spark, HBase, uh, uh, solar, things like that. And to the wider, to a broader stretch spectrum, Big Top not only does packaging, so Big Top does packaging, testing, deployment, and virtualization as a whole stack for you. So, because if you would like to build Hadoop distribution, you, are not only, you, you cannot build that uh, well if you only got packaging. You still need to test your package, you still need to test your, test, test your functionality for the deployments, and you finally can, after you do, did that, you can finally say the packages are good to go for the, to the production. So here's uh, some community stats. We are currently have 94 total con uh, contributors. So uh, for a record, Spark has a thousand, more than a thousand, which I think is an outlier. <laughs> And for the rest of all, uh, it's all around 100 of contrib total contributors. So we are in the, Hadoop area, uh, in the big data area for, thing, for five years, since 2012. And we currently have 30 
uh, Hadoop ecosystem uh, components package it. Uh, those are supported in five Linux distribution with uh, two architectures, which is uh, x86 and uh, IBM PowerPC, PPC64 uh, LE. So uh, improvements, imp improvements uh, in BigTar packaging. Uh, so here's a, a fairly old list. We put it on our document to tell users you need to install those packages, those dependencies on your build environment in order to get uh, you to build Hadoop distrib distribution. So uh, someone saw that, we will say, seriously, you want me to install those things on my, my own? Uh, so it's very tedious, right? So, so we come up with a solution called the Big Tattoo Chain, uh, which is a, a bunch of Puppet recipes for you to install all the required libraries for you. Uh, so this is an example for you if you would like to have a build environment. First, you need to clone a GitHub repository, and you get into the, the directory, the Big Tattoo directory, and then you just execute that uh, puppetized uh, short script that one will get your uh, machine uh, have Puppet installed. So after that, we can call this Gradle target, which is tool chain, and then it will uh, tell Puppet to do the rest of the stuff for you. So Puppet will determine which uh, OS you're running on and uh, determine which package, which dependency you need to be, it need to be installed on this build environment. So the only prerequisite is uh, Java because we 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 are go, we are using Gradle uh, to run the tool chain. So that's big up tool chain. So if once we have tool chain, we can have our uh, continuous integration uh, infrastructure uh, built. So for us, we use Jenkins, and you can uh, we, you can have multiple. Uh, build slaves such as uh, CentOS, Fedora, Ubuntu, uh, uh, cre uh, VM created. And then uh, you just apply tool chain on those uh, build, build machines, which uh, will get you the, the environments settled. But that's a problem, right? If one of the build slaves goes down, uh, you, you, you cannot have that kind of the, the whole distribution for that Linux, uh, for, that, for the whole big top distribution for that Linux distribution uh, cannot be built. So it's not uh, that flexible. So that's why we introduced uh, Docker in our uh, continuous, uh, continuous integration infrastructure. So Docker uh, came in with the advantage of uh, the the uh, flexibility. So if one of the build slave goes down, it's okay because Docker uh, provides the immutable environment for us. All, all, the, all the build environment are uh, packaged within a Docker image. So we only need to ship that image to another build environment. Uh, and then uh, we can tell it to just spawn up the container and have the proper Linux distribution built on top of that Docker container. So how to build packages? Uh, what we offer is a one liner. Here you can see here's a, a one liner which uh, you, you only need to set up two uh, variables, which is uh, what, which always you would like to build, which Linux distribution you would like to build, and the, the second one is the component. So here we choose Debian, 8, and Hadoop. And you just need to run this docker run command. So what it does is it will uh, mount the big top repository inside docker. And that docker image is uh, the, the one we built uh, using the previous uh, tool, which is called the, the tool chain, right? We built the, the docker build image. and we named it Big Top Slaves. So you use the proper uh, built environment, and then you can tell it to run the Gradle 
component, a, a great target to build Hadoop, uh, to build Hadoop packages uh, with, against a uh, proper Linux uh, distribution. So this is the uh, one line, and we, we use this tool to set up our CI, uh, uh, our CI jobs. So here's the build matrix we offered. So you can, you can just uh, look, up, look up this in uh, ci.bigtop.apache.org. So right now we have four Linux distribution uh, supported, and we also have uh, two of them from uh, Power P P PPC 64 LE. So this is uh, the, the, the build uh, status against currently uh, Big Time Master. So uh, one, one quick uh, notice is that uh, some of them are failing, not, not, not because it is actually failing, it is because we are generally generating a large amount of traffic against those uh, external uh, resources. So we, are, we, we constantly got banned by them. <laughs> but if one of the components failed uh, across all the uh, OS, then it must be, have some problem. Okay. So after we come up with this uh, dockerized uh, build infrastructure, it's, it is extremely friendly for porting. So for one example is uh, how to port uh, Big Top distribution to Power uh, PPC 64 LE. So uh, at the high level uh, step, you, there, there are only three steps you need to do. First is to prepare a Big Top tool chain uh, PPC 64 LE base image, a uh, base Docker image. So, and then you just apply, uh, you, 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 uh, first to play, prepare the base image, and then you apply Big Top tool chain on top of it. And finally, you can just use that uh, one layer we've pre provided previously to have all the bit up uh, components built on top of the PPC 64 LE uh, architecture. So this effort was done uh, back in 2016. And by that time, we ported uh, 22 out of 24 bit components uh, within just two weeks. With Five, only five patches, uh, and those patches are mainly for the dependencies, the, the downstream dependency for the uh, for the architecture. So that uh, we would like to give with credit to one of the big car PNC, which who is uh, Emil Sandra from IBM. Okay, so. Uh, till now, I think uh, big car's early early mission has accomplished because uh, all of the Hadoop distribu distribution right now are leveraging Big Top as for their foundation to build the packages. And so what next? Uh, we want to get out from the Apache Dome. So <laughs> new focus and new and target users. Uh, instead of focusing on uh, distributor, those vendors, we kind of uh, try to reach out more to data engineers uh, or the application builder. They, 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 they're writing Hadoop, uh, Hadoop ecosystem components uh, code to develop solutions to build applications. Those, those uh, engineers, we would like to reach out a bit more. And then we would like to add more solution diversity. So for example, for, for streaming, we offer Flink as well as Apex in our uh, distribution. And for in-memory cache, you will also have Alucio and Ignite uh, package it. Um, we also ha have some uh, fr developer-friendly tool offered, uh, or we ca I can say which we currently are building, uh, which are provisioner and same bus. So I'll talk about these two later. And something uh, we haven't gone to yet uh, is uh, we would like to build some uh, big data stack references. So uh, newcomers or those people who are not quite familiar with the area can just take the reference and try it out to, to figure out wh how they can uh, down with, they can down with uh, big data uh, ecosystem. 
And of course, machine learning, deep learning is one of the hardest topic uh, re recently. So we definitely wa don't want to miss it uh, in, in the community. So uh, Docker for GitHub Provisioner. Uh, GitHub Provisioner is a tool to demonstrate the full life cycle of GitHub. So uh, as I said previously, we, uh, we as a distribu distribution uh, provider, we can not only build a package and ship it to the user, right? We need to have, the, have it properly de deployed, and then we, we need to test all the compatibility uh, around the, this distribution. And if that test passed, we can finally say those uh, our distribution is valid, and we, then we can ship it to uh, users. So one of the uh, solution we uh, used is background. Uh, so we use background as an abstraction layer to support those different kind of resource providers. So what we were trying to do is to use background to provision the resources, and then we can put uh, all the our deployment code on top of it, and then we can then uh, test all the uh, distribution stuff, and finally we can uh, have the lab, those packages uh, tested and, and say it, it was all good to go. So this, this is the technology we adopt, so we would like to use it to support different kind of uh, uh, virtualization technologies such as uh, virtual uh, VMs and uh, Docker. So uh, back in BigCard 1.0, we built this one-click Hadoop provisioning uh, uh, tool. So we, what we call this uh, BigCard Provisioner. And what it does is very, very simple. We, we have the, we have the uh, one line for you, which is uh, a short script uh, called uh, Docker Hadoop DSH. And you can, uh, you can poke around with it. We have the helper script in that. And here we just uh, use the option to specify uh, it to create a three, uh, three nodes uh, cluster for us. So then uh, we will uh, we'll use Vagrant to call Vagrant's Docker provider to spawn out three Docker containers, and then we apply our uh, BitHub Puppet uh, scripts. We 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 also have BitHub Puppet uh, deployment script. Uh, within our repository. So we apply the deploy, deployment script on top of those three containers, and then we can finally get an up and running cluster, which has all the uh, components, all the components you specified uh, to, to, to be deployed. Uh, so but pro the problem is for the Docker's uh, background Docker provider is it requires user to uh, add a, a, a layer on top of those uh, Docker build, uh, base images, which is to include the Vagrant public key, so that Vagrant can uh, properly SSH into those containers. So that's one of the problems with uh, Vagrant's Docker provider. And the second one is there are too many issues with the, uh, Vagrant's auto-created uh, boot to Docker VM. We have been through this for around uh, one or two years, and I think uh, those, the boot attacker VN solution is not quite uh, stable. And next, uh, there's a bug uh, in Vagrant's uh, Docker provider, which keeps opening for two years. Uh, that prevented us to use some Vagrant native solutions for provisioning. So which come up, comes up to the next one, is the next problem is we cannot share the same code uh, for different providers anyway. So that, 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 that kind of uh, make our code base uh, different to, uh, difficult to maintain. So we, because currently we also have a Vagrant, which is for VirtualBox uh, provider, uh, provisioner, and we also have a Docker uh, provisioner. So right now, these two uh, code bases are, not, are different. Uh, and next is uh, next problem is not all the Docker options are supported in Vagrant file. 
So background file is background's uh, a configuration file. So you must follow the the pattern it, it offers uh, to get uh, you so that you can get control to for for background. The the final final the final one is uh, dark, the background provider the background Docker provider is quite 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 slow. So we had a bad usage experience back then. So those those problems all happened uh, before uh, become 1.2. So uh, in in 1.2 we kind of uh, tried to fix that. So we replaced it by Docker Compose. So Docker Compose is the native solution uh, provided by Docker, and so for users, everything's uh, are not changed. Are not changed. You just need to use it as the same. But we, at a, at a behind the scene, we replace the, the 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 underlying orchestration tool. So some of the advantage is, is are uh, there are no mo no need to create a customized uh, image beforehand. So. For Vagrant, we need to play, we need to insert that uh, Vagrant public key. But right now, we don't need to do that. And uh, it has better compati compatibility with Docker because uh, we are now using a Docker native solution. Third one is uh, in order to write, write uh, properly configure Docker Compose, you just need to write a simple YAML file. So it's it's clean, so people can also dig down into it and 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 try to modify it if you, you want a uh, advanced feature. Next, uh, it supports new features such as our overlay network, which is a software defined network provided by Docker. So because we, as uh, as I say, we use not Docker's native solution. So right now we can uh, s uh, seamlessly. Uh, Adopt these new features as well, and we can also leverage Docker Swarm for multi-node deployment, which is also a native solution come up with, with Docker, and so we we are, we are we are fine with it because we are we are we are in the ecosystem in Docker's ecosystem. And the final one is uh, it's it's really fast because. Uh, I think it's because Docker Compose is uh, on uh, mainly written for Docker, so we get we get a better user experience uh, uh, by using that. So how to run Docker pro provisioner? Uh, here's an uh, example. Uh, you can just execute this uh, to get a, a cluster properly provisioned. So. Uh, on, on top of that, you can just find out the, some of the simple configuration under Big Top Provisioner Docker directory. Uh, and you can also have your own customized uh, configuration as well. And after you uh, have that configured, you can execute that, uh, that line in the middle, which is a Gradle wrapper we offered to uh, uh, create a cluster. So here we have two com uh, configuration, right? We have the uh, a, a config configuration specified, which is a customized configuration, and uh, another one is non instant instant instances. So here we set it to one, but you can you can just tweak it. Yeah. So the Gradle target is Docker dash uh, hyphen provisioner. So you can just uh, use this target. If you, you don't specify any configuration, uh, it's fine. We will we, we have a default one for you. And finally, the, the, the third line is to, the third part is to just destroy that cluster you just created. So we, so that's, that's how you run Docker Provisioner. And we also adopt this solution in our uh, continu continu continuous integration uh, uh, framework. So here's the, the, the job we set up for, for using it. So we get a uh, full visibility uh, out of all the big top puppet uh, deployment code. So as you can see, there are some of them are failing because uh, in different uh, operating system, we have different problems. 
But uh, right now we're working on 1.2, uh, 1.21 release, and uh, we, we are going to fix most of them. And I, I think uh, Hadoop and Spark are two of the most uh, important features. So we constantly make it work uh, regardless of the release. So for provisioner, there are some use cases. Uh, I think uh, for developer, for application developer, cluster administrator users, uh, they can run Hadoop cluster to test their code. And you can also try test uh, configurations before uh, you apply that to production using provisioner. And if you are just a user, you can also uh, play along with BigTop Big Data Stack using the provisioner. So for contributors, uh, you can easily test your packaging deployment and testing code using the provisioner. Uh, for those uh, distribution, uh, distribution uh, builder, uh, by following our CI setup guide, you can have the, your, your own CI matrix uh, and you can patch the up, upstream code uh, easier. So that, that's for the provisioner. And right now we're getting into uh, a new new feature which is called BigTop Sandbox. So why we would like to have BigTop Sandbox? Uh, because we want to have the e easiest way for users who, don't, who are who's not familiar with this area to easily get started. Uh, so BigTop Sandbox is just a, a set of Docker images that already have uh, BigTop uh, stacks uh, properly installed and configured. So uh, users just need to uh, use Docker command to run the run and to start a container, and you they, they will have the environment. They will have a cluster, a pseudo cluster, properly set up and up and running without any installation. Uh, so. Another side is we also offer the command line tool for you to build your own stack. So you can choose which components you would like to build, would like to provision the inside the image, and then you can ship that to a user or your colleague. So uh, the idea of the Docker sandbox uh, is we we are coming up with this uh, kind of the uh, image uh, layers. So uh, um, at the bottom of it, we have the base image, right? Uh, so for those base images, we can just grab those official images from Docker Hub. And in the middle layer, we will have the deployment and management tool uh, installed. So in, uh, and then uh, finally we, the, the final layer will be a customized big data stack. So for example, if you would like to have Hadoop, you would like to have uh, Spark, you would like to have Flink. Uh, that's on your own choice. You can choose which one you would like to deploy in this uh, image. So one of the concrete implementation will be looked like this. So at the bottom, we have the base image, which is one of our, the image we provided. We have, we have uh, Ubuntu image from uh, official Docker Hub and then we just puppetize it. So then we can have our Docker, our big top puppet uh, snippets uh, installed. Uh, so after we get that installed, we can use big top puppet to properly deploy and provision the, the components you want. So for example, here we, we have HDFS, Yarn, and Spark. So we, you will have the Spark and Yarn cluster are uh, probably uh, provisioned for you to run, uh, to run any uh, workloads. So at the image build side, uh, it will be uh, kind of look like this. So uh, once we have the, uh, once we have the uh, base image available, we ha and we have the uh, deploy and deployment and management tool installed, uh, the only thing we uh, we need to do further is to supply a configuration for it and tell 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 it we which which components we would like to deploy. So 
uh, I will show you later uh, the, the some details, but it will uh, at a high level uh, view it will be look like this. So after we supply the configuration, we will uh, we can just use Puppet apply uh, to get uh, the cost provision, and then we finally package it, close all the all the services and we package it then into uh, Docker images. So that's on the build side. So how to build? Uh, of course, you need to first uh, get a BitHub repository, and you get into BitHub Docker sandbox directory. So here we have the build .sh, uh script for you. So we also have a helper script, so you can just try it out. And that's that, that uh, option, dash A, is, uh, is a Docker account. Uh, for you to specify. So why we would like to have this? Because uh, normally you would like to have these images uh, shipped around uh, the world or to around your company. So you will have the Docker, you, you will use Docker Hub or you, you will use Docker Registry. That, that's on your own choice. But uh, that kind, you, you kind of need to separate which, uh, which one is the owner. And the second option is dash O, which is uh, for you to specify which operation system you would like to build uh, the distribution on top of it. So the next one is dash C. So uh, that dash C uh, option is for you to specify the components you want. So those components, you can just uh, choose whatever you want from what we offered from Docker, uh, from Big Top Puppet. So uh, you can just have that uh, script uh, execute to build the image you want. So after you do that, you can have the image built uh, at your local Docker uh, engine. So on the other hand, you can also specify your customized configuration. So that's what I told you. We will we'll have the site YAML configuration, which comes from uh, BigTop Puppet. So in BigTop Puppet, we use this configuration to configure all the things you would like to depo uh, deploy or provision. So if you know the detail, you can, you can just uh, try to configure that. So how to run uh, the image you, you just built? Uh, it's very simple. You just uh, you just get the image from Docker Hub, and you use the Docker uh, you use the native Docker run command, and you will try to bring up all bring up all the components. For example, uh, HDFS, Yarn, and Spark during the uh, the, the, the runtime, and then. Uh, a couple of minutes late, a uh, couple of seconds later, you will have the pop, the cost properly uh, provisioned. So, a little bit down to detail. Here's how you run the, the how how you run the same box. Uh, here you can specify which port you would like to uh, forward it. Uh, so, for example, if you would like to have a HDFS and Young cluster, you will probably need, want to explore the UI, the web UI for HTTPS and YARN. So that's, that's why we have the dash P, uh, the, com the option here. So my, uh, uh, minus D is one of the, the option provided by Docker to set it, to tell, tell it to run it in detached mode. So uh, after we run this Docker container, get this Docker co container ran, uh, we can use Docker logs to tell the status. And, and then we can just execute the, 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 the workload you would like to have. So here you can see uh, we can use a Spark, we can run a Spark example to run the pie job. And I think uh, I, I can have the demo for you. So uh, right now, uh, because uh, it still takes some time to run the sandbox, so I already 
ran that uh, uh, beforehand. And if you use Docker logs to tell uh, to tell the, the log if it, when you execute, uh, you will see that. So we, we got some warning, which is okay. Uh, we'll fix that later. And you'll see that uh, it, those logs are from uh, Puppet. And finally, uh, you can see that we have this cluster uh, provision uh, within uh, 90 seconds. So uh, you can then uh, try to execute the Spark command uh, example uh, using this uh, against this uh, cluster. Okay. Where's my cluster? Okay, because uh, I think I'm quite up running out of time, so uh, this is, uh, I think I, I just show you how to run that. So let's get back to the slide and move, move, move uh, around. Uh, Move to the next. Uh, we already put out some example, uh, some images uh, on top on the Docker Hub. So for for you, I think you can just try it out and and give us some feedback. You can just find it on Docker Hub. Uh, find doc, uh, under Big Top's uh, account, we have the sandbox uh, images. So uh, some of the comparison between provision and sandbox, we. I think uh, uh, for sandbox, uh, you you will not get you, you, it's not scalable because it's pseudo cluster, but it's portable, and it, because we build everything inside the images, and kind of less flexible, but it it has a uh, it has a kind of quicker uh, startup time, and it doesn't require network, and you you also have uh, port forwarding uh, available. Uh, for different users, they probably would like to uh, use it different way, but the criteria, criteria would be for provisioner, you probably can want to use it for, to set up the multi-node cluster, and for sandbox, you just need to have the pseudo cluster to run. Uh, you can also integrate this, uh, the sandbox into your CI-CD pipeline, so one of the a big advantage of sandbox is it is immutable, so it won't change uh, uh, during your application development. So some of the some of the future plan will be we would like to use the sandbox images to uh, support our production deployment. So in order to do that, we probably need to adopt a uh, uh, host host network, or we will need to use. Uh, software defined network. Uh, we'll figure out that out later. And we also have the challenge, which is to have the uh, external volume for edit log or uh, net nodes FS image. If we don't uh, solve that issue, we probably cannot get the advantage of using Docker. And we also need to have a proper cluster orchestration tool adopted. So Swan or Kubernetes might be choices. Uh, releases. So, uh, back in April uh, 2011, uh, 17, uh, we have released uh, Bita 1.2, which comes up with two new components, Umbrella and, and Green Palm database. And we also have some featured upgrade, as you can see. Uh, but we have more. And some new features, we have uh, Juju being top charm. Uh, so Juju is one of the uh, cloud prov provisioning tool, so you can use Juju to provision uh, the cluster in AWS, Azure, uh, things like that. And it also comes up with a nice UI. And next is Sandbox. So right now we are in Alpha, so I, I think we don't recommend you to build it on your own uh, unless we get to one, oh, one, two, one release, but you can try all the image we just built. Uh, so one of, another improvement is Docker provisioner. So we have made it faster by adopting the native solutions. 
uh, here's one of the example of running Juju uh, GitHub charms. So it basically is a setup to run all the different uh, cloud provider, and it can tell you uh, which one is currently running well and which one's not. So uh, there's a link down down in the slide, so you can check check, check it out later. So one to one. Uh, uh, we are expecting it to be out late June, and some of our folks are expecting up to 2.7.4, and uh, but the, the release is just mainly for bug fixes. Our road toward uh, 1.3, uh, so machine learning, deep learning integration, and support for the ARM uh, architecture. Uh, some uh, more uh, improvement on our currently being cut puppet. And we also have the one to sell the CI matrix to cover all the, the, the components with big top test uh, framework. Uh, Ambari integration is one of the, the in most interest uh, part as well. Uh, we also want to offer the big top stack uh, reference in that release. So that's for one three. Uh, just a, a quick um, announcement. Uh, we will have the ODPI big test drive pro test drive program, which just uh, announced uh, two days earlier. So basically, you just submit your proposal and contribute big top. You can you can contribute big top with funding. Uh, so right now the call for paper is open. Call for proposal is open. You can uh, just submit your proposal. Uh, so a couple of references, and thank you. Uh, any questions?